So the, the second talk is, will be by Ifei He about uh, uh, <laughs> conformal bootstrap for uh, 2D percolation and logarithmic conformal field theory. Uh, so logarithmic CFT. It's logarithmic CFT. CFT, yes, this is what Not I said. Not Luvio. Did you say Luvio? No, logarithmic C ah, sorry, CFT. Sorry. <laughs> I, I turn it on. Ah, you mean? It's better now? Okay. Mm, so I want to start by first uh, thanking the organizers for um, giving me this chance to visit Florence and also the Institute and also for uh, this opportunity to speak here. So I want to tell you something that uh, some progress that we have made recently of using the conformal bootstrap approach to study two dimensional percolation. Um, and um, uh, since we have a very broad audience, uh, I'm going to basically ignore most of the technical details, but just focus on the main ideas and uh, uh, show you the main results. This is based on this um, ser how does this this series of paper with um, Hubert Salah and Jasper Jacobson and their student uh, Lina Grant Samuelson. <clears throat> So we start by considering uh, the percolation model, which can be simply defined on a lattice uh, at, at, uh, for, for the uh, links between two lattice sides, there's a certain probability of forming a bond and uh, a given configuration uh, of percolation is given by a random graph where the connected parts are called clusters. Uh, when the pro percolation bound probability takes a critical value, the mean cluster size diverge, and this is a typical example of a geometric type of phase transition. And as we know, the continuous phase transition in the scaling limit are given by conformal field theories. But uh, in this case, for the geometrical phase transition that we're studying, this is, de this, this is described by non-unitary conformal field theories, which is poorly understood. And uh, these non-unitarity essentially arise from the fact that we're trying to describe a geometrical uh, extended degrees of freedoms and uh, um, uh, there is not a well-established technique to tackle this kind of CFT. And in particular, for example, one of the most fundamental uh, physical observables are the um, quantities that describe the probability of a number of lattice points belonging to the same cluster, which are the cluster connectivities. And uh, what we would like to do is to use uh, CFT techniques to compute these quantities in the scaling limit. Uh, a starting point to uh, uh, study the percolation model is to map it to a local spin model, which is given by the Q-state POTS model. In this case, each uh, lattice site, there is a spin variable taking Q possible different states, and we can write down the partition function in terms of a spin configurations. And uh, then we can rewrite this uh, in terms of cluster configurations in the following way. If the two neighboring sides share the same spin value, then we say they form a bond uh, on the link between uh, these two sides. And in this way, the uh, partition function is written in terms of these cluster configurations. And the original uh, parameter Q, which uh, is the labels the number of states for the spin variable. Now it's just a weight associated with each cluster. And so the model is analytically continued to uh, arbitrary real values of Q. For the critical model, for Q between zero and four, the scaling limit is described by the POTS CFT, uh, which correspond to the central charge C between minus two and one. <clears throat> After this is done, we can then take the limit of Q goes to one. So namely that there is only one possible color for these clusters. And this recovers the percolation model, which corresponds to the central charge C equals to zero. Uh, 
And uh, once we have done this, uh, the pot spin serves as a order parameter for the percolation. And uh, um, the, these cluster connectivities that we would like to compute is given by CFT correlation functions of the spin operator, which we can write down in a, a CAC notation like in minimal models, but in this case with indices one half and zero. Uh, in the past decades, uh, many work have been done uh, to study the two-point and three-point cluster connectivities, and these are the quantities that are pretty well understood. A much more non-trivial case is the four-point connectivities, uh, since these uh, observables actually pro probe the spectrum of the corresponding CFT, and uh, there are four different connectivities we can write down of this type. Uh, suppose we consider four different lattice points, label them one, two, three, four. Then the first one is given by the probability of these four points belonging to the same cluster, which we call uh, PAAAA. And the second one is for one, two, belonging to the same cluster, and three, four, belonging to the different cluster, we call it PAABB, and similar, we can define the other two. In the scaling limit, these quantities are then given by the, in the pot CFT, the four-point function of the spin operator, and uh, the goal is to determine these quantities in the, yes? Ah. Uh, you mean we don't have the the quantity that has one? Uh, ah, if you look at this, uh, the definition of the order parameter, and uh, then you will see that the four-point function of the order parameter does not couple to those probabilities. You can do some analysis, but these are the uh, probabilities that couple to the four-point function of the order parameters. The order parameter. Uh, so yeah, so if you look at the order parameters and compute its four-point function, and you will see that it, it's uh, given uh, in terms of a linear combination of these four different probabilities, each one with some coefficients that you can find out by counting, for example. So the goal is to determine these four-point functions using the CFT. And uh, one challenge is that we can see that it, this has the fractional CAC indices, unlike what we're familiar with in the minimal models. So these kind of correlation functions are not in general given by the solutions of the BPZ differential equations. So that pose some challenge of how to compute them. So a new strategy is to use the conformal bootstrap approach. Uh, in this way, uh, the correlation, the four-point function can be determined by the conformal symmetry along uh, up to this uh, quantity called conformal blocks, which one can compute using conformal algebra. Uh, and uh, so it's written as a sum over uh, all the states, each one with a certain conformal blocks and also some uh, amplitude associated with that intermediate state. And there, uh, so conformal blocks are computed using the symmetry. And so the dynamical quantity that we want to find out are the spectrum in, uh, appearing in this sum and the amplitude associated with each state. And if we consider different limits of uh, taking this kind of conformal block expansion, uh, which correspond to the S-channel, T-channel kinematic limit, then this equation, uh, which is a bootstrap equation, puts strong constraints on the spectrum and the amplitude that can appear in this expansion. And so we know the conformal blocks and the determination of these connectivity quantities amounts to finding the spectrum and the amplitude. And uh, the first attempt to uh, uh, solve these connectivities using this approach uh, appeared several years ago, where they consider a certain combination of these connectivities, although in the end what they solved is not quite the pot, POTS model, but they propose a very interesting uh, numerical approach to solve these, which we're going to use. 
So first, we need to understand the spectrum. These are solved by uh, Yves Salau and Jasper Jacobson in 2018. What they did was to put the system on a cylinder, uh, which is conformally in, uh, equivalent to the plane, and then use the loop representation of these uh, cluster models. And then by examining the eigenvalues of the transfer matrix on the cylinder, these quantities uh, in the scaling limit give rise to the scaling dimensions of the operators or the states appearing in the spectrum that uh, appear in these four different connectivities. On the other hand, the loops on the cylinder are described by the so-called affine temporally leap algebra, which is generated by a few elements. And these eigenvalues of the transfer matrix appear uh, in terms of irreducible modules of this affine temporally leap algebra. To translate it into a CFT term, each of these module in the scaling limit correspond to an infinite tower of Virasoro conformal family. We can actually plot uh, the spectrum that they obtained, and uh, these are the scaling dimension of these operators as a function of Q, and we can see a very dense spectrum. So a further thing we can do, which we did, was to uh, look at more precisely on the lattice how these uh, eigenvalues of the transfer matrix appear in these connectivity quantities. So we can essentially measure the amplitude of each of them and then look at what kind of information we can get. And so we find something surprising. If we look at a certain eigenvalue of the transfer matrix and then compare uh, its amplitude appearing in two different connectivity quantities, then we find that these ratios depends only on the parameter Q and which affine template leap module it belongs to. What this means is that all the eigenvalues that belong to the same module has the same ratios. And moreover, these quantities don't depend on the lattice size, uh, so they are quite universal in that sense. And from high uh, precision numerical computation, we can obtain these ratios, and they're in general given by rational functions of Q, um, although we don't know uh, a first principle computation of these quantities, but these are just numerical uh, extraction on the lattice. So what this tells us is that uh, there is actually a way to, certain, uh, to further uh, organize the CFT states uh, that appears in this very dense spectrum. Since these eigenvalues of the transfer matrix in the continuum limit give rise to the scaling dimensions of the, in the, of the operators in the CFT, we can consider the following. Suppose we take a certain connectivity PAAA then using the bootstrap approach, we would like to expand it in terms of the conformal blocks over all the states and each one in amplitude. But we can also rewrite this sum as first summing over all the affine template leap uh, representation uh, with the overall um, amplitude, and then put all the states belonging to the same module and do this sum with active amplitude. And the observation on the lattice tells us that the quantity in the box here is actually universal in the sense that it depends only on this uh, affine temporary leap module. And also it, it doesn't depend on which connectivity quantity that we're considering. So this is something that we define called uh, interchiral conformal blocks. And so these connectivity quantities should actually be uh, expanded using these interchiral conformal blocks with some overall uh, amplitude. And the name comes from some earlier work which people did on the lattice uh, that finds an interchiral algebra in special cases, but the continuum limit of this algebra is not very well understood. Uh, so the quantities, and we're going to use that for bootstrap application. And to do this, um, we need to first consider 
I won't go into the detail of how to do that, but it's use the fact that some operators in the CFT are uh, Virasora degenerate, and this leads to some recursion relations, and one can then group uh, different Virasora conformal blocks into this interchiral conformal blocks. And this type of te techniques were used in the Liouville theory to obtain a bootstrap solution. And uh, once this is done, we can write down the bootstrap equation for these four connectivity quantities. And uh, this defines a linear system uh, of these overall uh, amplitude, and we can numerically solve this linear system and determine these quantities, then claim that we have determined the connectivity quantities. So the results uh, are are shown in these plots here. And what I'm plotting here are these uh, overall amplitudes appearing in three different connectivities as a function of Q for Q between zero and four. From these plots, we can see clearly uh, the behavior of these amplitudes as a function of Q and also the analytic structures. The most interesting point is, of course, as Q equals to one that correspond to percolation. And uh, most of the time, we see that it's pretty regular, although uh, at certain amplitude, we see that there appears to be some divergence. And we'll understand this a bit later. <clears throat> Uh, but the first check of these results is to compare with the lattice computation, which although has uh, finite size corrections, but they give us some idea that we're indeed bootstrapping the correct quantities. And these are the comparisons with the lattice, where the crosses are the lattice computation at finite size, and the bootstrap results are these dots. And we see that they agree uh, in terms of order of magnitude and behavior uh, as a function of Q, and also the analytic structure. So this uh, tells us that we're indeed uh, using a bootstrap to solve the correct quantity. And some more interesting thing is uh, whether these bootstrap results can tell us some analytic information of the percolation. And so what, what we observe is something that we call a renormalized Liouville recursion. In the Liouville theory, and it's non-diagonal generalization, there are two operators which are Virasora degenerate. So they have the indices 1, 2, and 2, 1. And in that case, this leads to an analytic bootstrap solution of the whole CFT. In the case of POS, we don't have these good properties. In fact, we only have one operator, 2, 1, that is degenerate, which corresponds to the energy operator in the CFT. And so we don't have this kind of uh, analytic solution. But using the numerical bootstrap result, we find some analytic relations uh, in, the, in the following sense. If we take the ratios of two amplitudes and we find that they are given by some analytic expression of this type, they are made of two factors. One factor is the exact relation appearing in the Liouville theory. Uh, supposing that the other operator is also degenerate. But in the pot CFT, this is stressed by an additional factor, which is given by rational functions of Q. Uh, and these are completely from numerical uh, results that we don't know how to compute uh, from first principle yet. But the fact that there exist such analytic ex uh, expressions of these amplitudes uh, tells us that perhaps there is some analytic solution to these models. And uh, one interesting thing to do is perhaps to look at on the lattice uh, the loop interpretations of the Liouville theory and the POTS model to see uh, their connections. And uh, uh, now we can consider the limit of Q goes to one that goes to percolation model. This corresponds to a CFT with central charge equal to zero. Another interesting theory with the same central charge is the Owen loop model when N goes to zero, which describes the self-avoiding polymers. And uh, the CFT in this case is very hard to study, uh, which can be seen by considering the operator product expansion of the order parameter. And in this OPE, 
the stress energy tensor appears, which defines the two-dimensional Virasoro conformal algebra, but its coefficients has a divergence at C equal to zero, and the CFT, uh, the OP becomes problematic, which is a so-called C goes to zero catastrophe. And uh, moreover, if we look at the two-point function of the stress energy tensor, it vanishes as C equal to zero. Um, and uh, since the stress energy tensor defines the Virasoro conformal algebra, in order to have a um, non-trivial CFT, uh, it necessarily acquired the so-called logarithmic partner, uh, which has a non-vanishing two-point function with the stress energy tensor. And the two-point function of this small t uh, itself has a logarithmic dependence on the field position. The B number appearing here is usually used as a parameter to this disordered systems. Uh, in the past, people have worked out the situation when putting the system on a half space, uh, which is a boundary CFT, and find that for percolation and polymers, this B number takes negative 5 over 8 and uh, 5 over 6, respectively. And uh, several years ago, for the bulk case, uh, which is the model defined on a full space, uh, people also did the lattice measurement and so find surprisingly that these B numbers are the same for the percolation and polymer, which takes a, a value negative five. Now we can tackle this using the CFT and uh, especially using the bootstrap information. If we consider a generic central charge operator product expansion of the order parameter in POTS, an ON model, we see that it has this form, which uh, many divergences appear. In particular, some of these coefficients are the quantity that we use a bootstrap to determine which shows the divergence. And the point is that these divergences precisely cancel out when we take the C goes to zero limit. And this gives rise to a logarithmic operator product expansion. And from this, we can also find, uh, compute this uh, B number and some higher uh, level structure uh, constant uh, precisely and recover the lattice measurement. And uh, the surprising uh, result is that although we have started from quite different models at the generic central charge, in the C equal to zero limit, this operator product expansion and these signature parameters are identical for percolation and polymers. There is obviously a lot to understand about this, but I will come to the summary. So um, we use the conformal bootstrap approach and combine it with some information from the lattice algebra to study the non-unitary CFT of percolation and numerically determine the four-point cluster connectivities. And uh, uh, from this result, we observe that there's some analytic expression uh, that we call a renormalized luvial recursion, which hints at possible analytic solutions of these cluster models. And uh, in the interesting case of C equals to zero logarithmic CFT, there are some connections between the percolation and polymer CFTs. And uh, it will be interesting to further study some geometrical quantities at this point. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. First of all, thank you for, for beautiful talk. Uh, great and for probably great work. Uh, have, a, have a question. Uh, for C equals zero, we have two theories, uh, percolation and self-avoiding works. Yes. And the question which you consider for percolation is cluster connectivity. Yes. It's for percolation. But perhaps the same question can be reformulated for also in geometrical terms for self-avoiding works. Yeah. Can you help me to... I know that it's related, but... Yeah, in this case... Uh... So the, in the 
uh, ON model, the operator, the spin operator would emit one uh, polymer line. And so one can consider the four point function of this type, which uh, would correspond to a different uh, connecting uh, polymer lines for four points. Uh, and it, precisely the same kind of computation can be done. Can you do the picture so we get four points? Yes. So the so uh, what you would have would be something like this and uh, different configurations. You can connect the so other can one. Throw, they can go there, right? so they can cross each other. They get to go around. Exactly, the yes, way, right? yes. Can you throw? Just sure that Let's say if you do this, then you have to do this. Is that what you're saying? Right, and the probability implying is, is also the same. Um, it can be replaced through the calculation through the same formula, both in the calculation, but formulas I guess what are different, right? You're thinking about something like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the same formulas. Mm. Or, or have to be written here too. I don't, I'm not sure. I think uh, because uh, people have also, I mean, after our work, uh, they continue to look at the Owen model. And um, mm, I guess one have to compare these results with the results from the POTS cluster model to see whether it's as you said, that whether it needs to be recomputed or there are some connections. Dense versus diluted loop model, right? Sorry? Yeah, it's a dense loop and a dilute. Because loop dense loop model is just POTS. It's the same problem, same images. Yes. It's the diluted loop model that needs to be compared to POTS if you want to understand yes. why it is the same. Yes. May I? Sorry, this was counting as a comment. May I make a question also? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had a, a nice question about the, in your last slide about the log uh, logo PE. So I may I might have missed the way you. It's, okay, no, no, not the summary, but before that. So uh, maybe you said it, but I, I missed it. So how, how do you derive this logo PE? Uh, my, my question is: that, Are there a general principle of uh, logarithmic conformal CFT which uh, gives you a well-defined way to arrive at these kind of expansions? Mm, so the idea here is to first observe that, uh, well, stress energy tensor has a fixed conformal weight of two zero, and uh, there is this other operator which abstractly we write as x, but this corresponds to uh, the so-called um, four leg operator in the in the Coulomb gas picture, uh, which emit. Well, you can think of it as joining two clusters, and this has spin two. So the point is that in the C goes to zero limit, this uh, conformal dimension of this operator coincide with that of the stress energy tensor. And so uh, using these, we, uh, you can define uh, this logarithmic partner, partner by writing by you, from uh, using the stress energy tensor and this operator, and then construct this kind of logarithmic C uh, OPE. I mean, obviously, I didn't go into the technical detail, but that's the general idea. May I? I wanted to make a question on these beautiful, nice ratios of rational functions in capital Q that you have. Yes. First of all, I didn't get how do you determine them? Uh, how difficult it is to have them? These and how many ones of or, or the ones before? I mean, uh, it's just the, the bootstrap results are precise enough that if you take these ratios, you can see, for example, um, what one can do is to look at these results and then take the ratios of two amplitudes. From here, we see uh, the analytic structure. Then you, you can somewhat guess 
there's a factor of q minus one, q minus two in the denominator or the numerator, and the remaining factor, uh, I mean, it's a bit guessing, and uh, mm -hmm. then using these uh, results, you can more or less obtain the analytic form. And do you have many of them and you are showing us just a few examples? Or you just have the first few because numerics is difficult? Uh, I have this first few, but uh, uh, you can see that the numbers goes to 10 to the negative 6, 10 to the negative 8. The higher contributions are quite small. So uh, you can say that we have these quantities up to this numerical precision. I mean, I meant this was for trying to guess what's the general formula. If you don't have sufficiently many examples, that's hard to guess. Uh, sorry? I just wanted to comment that ah, okay. if the more you have, the better you can try to understand what they are theoretically. I think if we manage to understand just this first few ratios, how these factors appear, probably we have a pretty good idea about the higher ones, and then we can check numerically, but we still don't understand where these rational functions come from. Uh, one more question. Uh, these points are situated on the boundaries, on the boundaries. Suppose yeah. you have say a rectangular, sam rectangular sample and so forth points, that is a known formula, right? It's kind of um, due to, uh, to Cardi and Carlson years and years ago, right? For, for the ON, that would be similar to the SLE computations. Yeah, so it's known formula, right? But for the clusters, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't think for the clusters it's known. Well, okay, sorry, actually, yeah, it's probably known because you have these uh, operators that's on the boundary that emits, for example, two lines, and these are Verasora degenerate. So it has uh, integer CAC indices. You can solve differential equations to, to find them. So from this point of view, I interpret your work is that um, if uh, clusters attach the boundary, that's known, but what you did is in the bulk. Yes. Related but different story. Right. <clears throat> okay. I have also one question, okay. but maybe this is a question to me. <laughs> uh, so these nice, these <coughs> nice numbers, uh, these nice ratios of Q, certainly they uh, could be obtained by putting the model on a random lattice and uh, com computing them with the uh, 2D gravity. Okay, that would be nice. Methods. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank uh, Ifei again.